So interest rates are rising. We're seeing technology stocks continue to underperform in favor of some of the value names like the financials, industrials, staples. This is a big sector rotation. And the question that I'm getting asked a lot over the last couple of weeks is now the time to sell my technology stocks. I'm going to answer that today and more on today's Wealth Talk. So technology, as we've talked about for the past couple of weeks, has been underperforming. We've seen a rotation into some of what they traditionally call the value names, the financial stocks, the uh, staple stocks, we've seen utilities, all of these have started to do well. And when you look at that, a good test to kind of understand how that's going on is if you look at the two indexes. If you look at the NASDAQ, versus the Dow Jones, for example, the Dow Jones is made up of a lot more value stocks, your Procter and Gamble's and those types of names that are in there, your JP Morgan's, where the technology uh, sector is really much more heavily weighted in the NASDAQ. So over the last few weeks, if you've actually watched the stock market on a daily basis, you've seen the Dow Jones actually do relatively well. An index that I talk about a lot uh, something that we use at our firm, a uh, uh, portfolio that we benchmark against is the dividend aristocrats. Those are companies that have a track record of at least 25 years of increasing their dividends. Those indexes have actually been up, sometimes relatively uh, high, on a day where the NASDAQ has actually gone down. And so what people are starting to think, is this the beginning of something like we saw in 2000? where you saw those types of names, those dividend aristocrat names take off for a few years and the NASDAQ took really a long time to get back to its 1999, 2000 high. So that's a very legitimate question. Obviously you don't wanna be investing in technology stocks today and have to wait 10 years just to get your money back. So a couple of things, when you look at the nineties, valuations were much higher, uh, you know, 70, 80 times on a lot of these stocks. A lot of the technology stocks had no earnings at all. When you look at the technology sectors today, it's trading around 25 times earnings. When you compare that to the consumer staples like your Pepsi, Procter & Gamble's, Coca-Cola, that's trading at about 20. So while historically it's a little bit rich, it's not really that crazy, nothing like we saw back then. Also, we always talk about the 10-year bond. And as that goes higher, that becomes competition. That's still under 2%, though, where back in the late 90s, we're approaching towards 7%. So the scenario today, and we've talked about this for a while, is a little bit different. But let's talk about this year. What's going on? Well, we're seeing interest rates start to rise. Uh, the Federal Reserve just had a meeting on Wednesday saying they're going to keep things the same. When you look at the Fed dot plot, which is basically their predictions for when they do see interest rates rising, they don't see doing anything until 2023. So that's pretty tame. What they did also say on Wednesday, though, is they believe inflation is going to spike. They believe that GDP, GDP, gross domestic product, that's how much we produce as an economy on, on an annual basis, is going to go up to about almost 7%. So what the Fed is saying in the short run, they're expecting the economy to accelerate. They're expecting inflation to take off. Why is that? Well, look at your mailbox. A lot of you are getting stimulus checks. That's additional money. Uh, Disneyland, for example, just reported today, they're going to be opening on April 30th. Things are starting to open back up. People are going to go out. They're going to spend money that puts more money into the pockets of consumers. It creates more jobs. So you'll see the unemployment rate start to tick down. But what the Federal Reserve also said is that come two, three years later, they expect that GDP that'll be at 7% to go down uh, to somewhere around 2%. They expect inflation, which can tick up to 3.5% to tick back to 2%. And why is that? Well, when you look at the economy, obviously there's gonna be a sugar high. I talked about this uh, Wednesday on Fox. There's gonna be a sugar high for the economy because you're getting these stimulus checks. There's gonna be a sugar high because a lot of people are getting back to work for a short period of time. There's gonna be a sugar uh, high because there's this pent up demand. People haven't been on vacations. A lot of people have not been eating out in restaurants. So because that demand has been pent up, they're gonna go out and spend. But the question is, is that gonna happen for the next two, three, four, five, six, seven years? Are we gonna to continue to give people checks? Are people gonna to continue to spend more? Probably not. 
And so the question now, original question is, should we sell all our technology stocks and go into some of these value talk, stock names? Um, my answer is uh, no, you shouldn't. Uh, and also obviously it depends on your risk tolerance and your time horizon, but I could tell you for myself, uh, I always use a barbell approach. I have a lot of those dividend growth types of names in my own portfolio. Those sit in an account that subsidizes my income. Those are, that's passive income that I get that's consistently I'm counting on. I'm not so much counting on the appreciation of those types of stocks, although that obviously happens. Those stocks go up, the account value increases. I invest in those types of names more the consistency in the stream of income uh, that it provides. But when you're investing for growth, meaning you're looking to put a dollar into something and to grow it to $2 as quickly as possible, investing in those utility companies, staple companies that are only growing at two, 3% per year, when everything dies down are more than likely not gonna be what leads us to the next level. When you look at companies like Facebook, uh, companies like Amazon, Google, Apple, trillion dollar companies, some of them are still growing their top line over 20 something percent, which is staggering for companies that big. And then obviously when you dial down, into some of these you know, newer names like your CrowdStrikes, your Zoom, Zscaler, Palo Alto Networks, uh, those companies that we've talked about, a lot of those are growing 40%, 50% top line. If we look at the economy, what do you think is gonna be the next innovative idea? Is it gonna come from food and beverage stocks? Uh, is it gonna come from financials? Or more than likely is gonna come from something like technology, artificial intelligence, things of those that, that nature. I believe it's going to be technology. I believe technology is the wave of the future. I believe what we've seen uh, during COVID where you've had a lot of this remote workforce is going to continue. I think this is a major shift in really the jobs going that way and really businesses becoming more profitable through the use of technology. And I don't see that changing anytime soon. So for me, for my long-term investments, I want to remain in technology. One thing I talked about last week is one of the things that I used to enter. And I showed you that the NASDAQ uh, actually pulled back below its 50-day moving average, but then went back above it, which it still is now. But there was still some good stocks that were trading under that that I believe would follow. And if you look at the charts of some of those names that we talked about, that's exactly what's starting to happen now. So you know, really the, 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 the short answer is I don't ever think you should be in or out of anything entirely unless it makes no fundamental sense. So I don't think you should sell all your technology stocks. I don't think you should sell all your dividend stocks. I think it's really a balance between the two. But when you're focusing on the growth part of your portfolio, so those of you who are young, maybe you have 20 years to investment, you're in 401ks, Roth IRAs. The last thing you want to do is something like a Roth IRA where you might have 20 or 30 years to grow money tax-free is put that into something too conservative, put that into something that's not growing. So when you think about your own portfolio and your own situation, ask yourself, what am I trying to do with this money? What are my expectations and what is my time frame? And for those longer growth time frames, I think you still want to look at the areas, sectors that are continue to get us that growth. So for you, I don't think you should be selling technology. Uh, also, what I would say, though, um, when you look across the market, a little bit of a different topic is there's nothing extremely cheap anymore. So what you might want to do for some of you, instead of just investing in the NASDAQ, you might want to start now looking at some specific segments within the NASDAQ. So maybe uh, if you were in some of the high flyers, um, some of the names actually like your older technology, Google, Facebook, those valuations are much lower today. Obviously, they're not growing 50 to 60%, but if you're a little bit concerned about valuations and not, not just necessarily sell all technology, maybe you pair back some of your two, 300% gainers, but don't forget some of those technology companies that are almost blue chips now, like Facebook and Google and Amazon. Do your research, look at the valuations on those, which are not nearly as high as some of the other names, and this might be an opportunity to kind of shift things around. So 
I hope that answers the question for people who have been asking me, should I sell all my technology stocks and only go into dividend stocks? I don't think so. I think it's going to be a little bit of a rougher ride this year. I do believe you're finally going to see some of those financial names, some of the industrials do well. Potentially, uh, an index like I talked about, the dividend aristocrat index could outperform the NASDAQ, so you don't want to abandon those. But for those of you in technology, names you like, good valuations, stick with it. But also remember, if we get a market correction, which we're due for one, 10, 15, 20% pullback, again, make sure that you use that opportunity to buy some of those names at a discount. Don't get scared. Don't get panicked like other people are doing. Be opportunistic. And that, in my 22 years of trading, investing, has really been the difference between those people who kind of do average or lose money versus people who do exceptionally well and make a lot of money. And I, I put that across all asset classes, classic cars, real estate, the stock market. Those people use people's fear to be able to create opportunity for themselves. And the corollary, when they see people get greedy, that's usually when they ring the register and they move to the side. So be opportunistic, look for opportunity. And remember, if you like this content, make sure that you're sharing it with a friend, please. We're trying to get the word out. This is free weekly advice that we're providing to a lot of people. And I know a lot of people are asking that question right now, and there's a lot of misinformation out there. So if you know somebody who uh, would be interested in this kind of content, please do me a favor, send it to them. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe below, ring the bell. You'll get notified when we put the next piece of content out. Until next week, have a great weekend. Uh, continued health and wealth. We'll talk to you soon. I'm Rob Lee.